It was a year into the development of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. A team of developers at Nintendo and Grezzo had been given unprecedented freedom to develop something wholly original. A brand new Zelda title, which, while using the familiar art style from the Link's Awakening remake, played unlike anything that had been done before in the series. There was just one problem. Eiji Aonuma wanted them to change everything. He later said, I thought we could make something more interesting if we pushed harder. Tomomi Sano, who had directorial responsibilities on the game, put things another way. She said that Aonuma was guilty of, quote, upending the tea table after a year. The use of this phrase sees Aonuma graduate to a new level of seniority within Nintendo. Typically, Shigeru Miyamoto is accused by developers of flipping the tea table and making everyone restart their work. Indeed, Aonuma knows very well what it's like to have your tea table flipped midway through development. Just as Aonuma is now playing the role of Miyamoto, Echoes of Wisdom was the chance for a group of long-time but perhaps underappreciated Zelda developers to move up the management ladder, finally getting to make bold, innovative decisions on their own. According to Aonuma, as a producer, it felt like watching your child grow up. I'm really grateful for all the hard work. Echoes of Wisdom, then, is not only a very different kind of Zelda game. It's also the first game to be directed by developers that could well be the future overseers of the series. Tomomi Sano didn't beat The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time when it first released on the Nintendo 64. Despite eagerly playing the game, she wasn't able to make it all the way through. To this day, she just doesn't feel like she's very good at playing action games. As luck would have it, this made her an invaluable asset when it came time to develop the Ocarina of Time's 3DS remake. Sano joined the development team late in the Ocarina of Time 3D's production, and was responsible, among other things, for relaying feedback from playtesters. A lot of this involved making sure that the game's difficulty curve wasn't too challenging. Said Sano, If there were moments where it seemed like the game was putting on too much of a challenge, I went over those areas from a player's perspective and made recommendations on whether we should fix certain issues or leave them as is, since they add as a part of the challenging flavour to the game. According to IG Aonuma, Sano's experience as a fan of the original game was vital to this work. He said, Whenever I wondered what it would feel like from a fan, I always asked Sano-san. With both the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3DS remakes, Sano worked hard to make sure that the game felt more fair, and that the path forward never felt too obscure. She later said, For this time, I did fail at the same scenes that I have failed at in the Nintendo 64 version. But now I feel like it's because I'm not that skilled in playing video games to begin with, so I felt that I was able to accept defeat. In the Nintendo 64 version, there were scenes where I couldn't understand why I failed, so I couldn't get the motivation to keep trying. In the 3DS version, however, I felt that I rarely ran into these situations. Even if I never worked on this project and purchased this game as a consumer, I think I would enjoy the game because I can now understand my mistakes better. Sano went on to liaise between Nintendo and several partners, including Grezzo, Alpha Dream, and Tantalus, developing games for the Zelda and Mario and Luigi franchises. One developer at Grezzo that she worked with was Satoshi Terada, who was primarily tasked with map design. For Echoes of Wisdom, both Sano and Terada were given directorial responsibilities for the first time. They had both worked on several Zelda remakes in the past, but now it was time to influence the future of the series. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom was developed backwards. Kind of. While the most striking part of the game's presentation is that the game features Princess Zelda in a starring role, this idea actually came relatively late in development. The team had created a game that centred around duplicating items from around the game map, creating echoes, and allowing the player to use these echoes however they wanted to solve puzzles. There was just one problem. When given the choice, many playtesters simply ignored this ability and hacked their way through the game with Link's sword and shield, exactly as they had been taught to do over 30 plus years of Zelda gaming. After some experimenting, it was decided that, for Echoes to be used properly, the team needed to strip out the sword and shield almost entirely. 
That meant finding a justification for this change within the story, and that led to considering other protagonists for this particular game. Said Aonuma, If that's the case, it must be someone who doesn't fight with a sword and shield, right? Who in the series would be a good fit for these powers and bring their insight to them? Well, that would have to be Princess Zelda. Over the years we've been working on the Legend of Zelda series, many people have often asked us, will Princess Zelda ever be the protagonist? And said, I'd like to play as Princess Zelda. When asked this question, I've always thought, of course, as long as it makes sense for the game and does justice to her as a character to be the protagonist. And answered that way. I had been trying in vain to figure out what would really do justice to her. But when I saw the team struggling to identify the ideal protagonist for this game, I thought, this is exactly the game for her. The decision to make Zelda the player character in the story instantly set Echoes of Wisdom apart from the majority of previous games in the series. But it was far from the only unique thing that Grezzo and Nintendo had settled on. When working to make Mario and Luigi Dream Team more accessible, Sano had an unorthodox solution to communicating some of the game's failings to her fellow developers. Public humiliation. One of the challenges of game design is that a developer can get too good at their own game, know it too well, and lose perspective. It's easy to end up making a game that is impenetrable for new players, and the feedback from playtesters was that Dream Team was just too hard. Especially for a demographic of playtesters who loved Mario & Luigi games for the story, but who weren't as experienced with games that tested their reaction times. Sano needed to convince many of her fellow developers why it was important to provide a less challenging option for these players. Luckily, she had access to a perfect resource to highlight the need for better guidance and accessibility. Her own lack of gaming skill. She said, to convince them of how bad I am, I even played the game using a projector in meetings so they could see how often I messed up. In the giant battle with Luigi, everyone cheered for me, but I couldn't do it. Satoru Iwata summed it up perfectly when he said, Sano-san functioned as a kind of sensor that showed you what it's really like for players. As a direct result of Sano's efforts, Mario and Luigi shipped with accessibility and difficulty options that would not have been present otherwise, most notably the game's easy mode. Because of this, the game could be enjoyed by players who otherwise would not have been able to play the way they wanted. It's hardly a surprise, then, that for her Zelda directorial debut, Sano contributed to a game that gives the player the freedom to approach any puzzle in their own way. This isn't the only reason why Echoes of Wisdom features such unique gameplay, but it's certainly not hard to see how Sano's previous experience made her perfectly suited to spearheading this particular game. When the developers at Grezzo were tasked with making a brand new, wholly original Zelda game, it was decided that everybody in the studio would be allowed to pitch ideas. Previous Grezzo Zelda games had been remakes and remasters, but this time around the senior team wanted to let everyone contribute at the early planning stages. Said Aonuma, When we were working on remakes, we didn't really get the chance to hear everyone's ideas. This time we asked everyone, not only the project planners for the game, but also the designers and programmers, to come up with lots of ideas. As these different suggestions were nervously presented to Aonuma, it was clear that a lot of people within the studio had similar ideas about what the game should be. Said Sano, Dozens of people participated, and even though they didn't brainstorm together or anything like that, surprisingly a number of similar ideas were proposed. But that's not a bad thing at all. I think everyone had a common idea of something they wanted to do in a game, and it just perfectly suited the world of The Legend of Zelda. The big idea that was settled on was referred to as copy and paste gameplay, in which the player could duplicate whatever items they came across in the game world. In its initial form, though, this played out very differently, with the player, as Link, constructing dungeons for other people to try out. Over the course of a year, the team worked on this idea and refined it. When they showed their progress to Aonuma, though, he felt compelled to flip the tea table. He said, Everyone else was developing the game with dungeon creation in mind, but I was right next to them thinking of something different. As I played, I started thinking that while it's fun to create your own dungeon and let other people play it, 
It's also not so bad to place items that can be copied and pasted in the game field and create gameplay where they can be used to fight enemies. That was the beginning of gameplay using Echoes. The gameplay was shifted from creating dungeons up until then to using copied and pasted items as tools to further your own adventure. This was a big shift for the project, but one that built well on the existing work that had been done on the game. Indeed, Aonuma insists that none of the earlier efforts on the Dungeon Creator game were wasted. He said, There's a reason it took a year to upend the tea table. After all, you can't really see the potential for ideas to develop into solid gameplay until you can verify features in their feel, so I wanted them to try making it first. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom represents a turning point for the franchise and for Nintendo, as a new generation of developers finally get to make their own indelible mark on the Zelda series, while still receiving careful guidance from the veterans that have made Zelda a household name. The game is, fittingly, an example of how there is more than one way to approach a tricky problem, and how a team where everyone's perspective is valued can create innovative new things. Even Sano's perceived lack of talent at playing action games has been a benefit to her work with Nintendo. The moral of the story is best summed up in this quote from Satoru Iwata, which is so perfect for this particular game that it feels downright prophetic. When I was a whole lot younger and felt a crazy sense of urgency, I used to tell myself, I wish that I could clone myself three times over. Looking back, however, I realised this thought was arrogant and narrow-minded. Our differences are what make each of us so valuable, and give life meaning.